what information do you look for on a young person's CV? Um, really, they don't need any um, real qualifications. Obviously, we do look for people that have got an understanding of English, maths and IT, but um, we're not looking for A-levels and things like that. So if you've got some um, experience, perhaps through volunteering in any sort of environment, or maybe you've worked in a charity shop, um, but also you could perhaps have a, uh, I don't know, an elderly relative maybe who's had perhaps de dementia, and so you could perhaps mention that in your CV. So you've got some appreciation of what people may experience when coming into a care home. What would a typical average day look like and what kind of tasks would I be involved with? If you're going to do 8 to 8, normal day shift, 12 hour, you just go in, you get there for about half seven and you have to log in. Um, and then from 8 you start feeding them because some of the residents need to be fed. Um, and then you go back in, once you've fed everyone else, you go back in and you get them washed and dressed, you get them up and you take them down to the lounge where loads of other residents are and you get them going into this activity, you need some encouragement to get, get them into an activity so then you know they don't feel like they're alone in the house because obviously it's a bit, you know, it's a bit daunting when you go into a care home, you're sort of like, well, what am I doing here, you know? And then, <coughs> then you have lunch around about half twelve one and then the dining room is filled with people loads of people go in and then you obviously you feed them you take them their dinner you feed them some of the people in the dining room don't need to be fed but the people that are in the beds that are bed rest uh they need to be fed you need to help them you need to just sort of you know encourage them to do them by themselves or assist them and then they relax for a couple of hours and then if you if you if you're going home at two, you get a changeover at two o'clock, where the new carers come in and they do two till eight, and then you, as soon as you get in at half two, you get them drinks and you take them a cake, so a little snack to keep them going until uh, supper time, which is at five. But in between uh, about half two, three, you have an activity, and that that can be from uh, musical bingo carpet bowls, a group crossword, some gardening out in the garden, um, you know, just general stuff like that. And then at five, you feed them, you've got supper again, and then it's exactly the same routine as lunchtime. And then, you know, you check their pads if they need to be changed and stuff like that. And you just, from five onwards, you care for them, like personal care, drinks again. And then when you get a chance, you have to log everything in the computer system absolutely everything we've done so that's why it's always handy to write it down on a hand sheet that you get so in case you forget something because you know it's that one thing that you forget might you might not think is important but it is really important everything's important um, and we have events on like we do events for Easter or if it's someone's birthday we've recently had we've recently had two events which is the upstairs downstairs tea party which is sort of like Downton Abbey sort of People, you know, we all the carers, we all dressed up in like old Victorian stuff. Um, we had him, we had a singer in, and then we had the strawberry tea party, where there's loads of different flavours of teas. Get all the residents downstairs on the on the ground floor, you know, try and punch loads of different teas, having like strawberries and cream, have a singer come in. So you know, it's, you know, we really make it sort of more comfortable, really comfortable, more welcoming for the residents. How much would I work independently and how much with other people? Um, you're always with someone else. There's always two of you on each floor, on one floor. There's always two of you. So you always be with your partner um, and you do everything with that person. Unless the residents are one carer, one carer person, you'll be, that's the only time you'll be on your own. And usually it's only about 15 minutes because they're quick, you know, they're easy they're able to, you know, get dressed themselves, but with a little bit of assistance. Um, but most of them are two care people. Some of them are free. Um, but yeah, mo you always be with someone else. Do people stay in your company and progress, or do they need to move to further their career? Um, it depends what sort of career pathway you've taken. If we choose the role of a carer, 
um, a carer can progress within our company. Um, you start, perhaps if you've got no skills at all, you'd move from a grade one to a grade two. Um, we do have some grade three roles, but you have to demonstrate that you can match the skills for those roles. Um, you could start as a carer and then maybe think, actually, I enjoy this, I would like to become a nurse. So you could train to become a nurse, but still come back during your, you know, your uni breaks to be a carer. Um, you can go on to become a manager or a homes manager. Um, you can be a carer and then perhaps you're doing recruitment or something as part of the role, you know, interviewing, paperwork, and then perhaps you could move into HR or you could become a domestic and think, actually, I'd like to become a carer and so you could move into becoming a carer. So there are lots of opportunities for you. What are the most important employability skills in your opinion? Really important for you to have empathy with the people that you're working for, um, to be able to respect them, to recognise them as individuals because even though people may be old or they have dementia, they've been somebody in their life and it's always important to remember that, to try and get to know them and to get to know perhaps a little bit about them, maybe either through their family or through their life history that may be available to you. So, um, yeah, I think it's quite important, those sorts of things. What qualifications and experience would a young person need to have to increase their chances of getting a job in your sector? In the care sector, um, we don't particularly look for qualifications, but we look for you being able to demonstrate those skills. But obviously, if you've done your MVQ in care at uh, school or, or college, then that's obviously demonstrating you've got some aptitude towards the role. Um, but you could just as easily use your MVQ in care, perhaps to work in the Healthy Living Centre or you know, at the Ashdown Centre, if you were perhaps trained to become a teacher for children with, say, learning disabilities. How can young people best prepare themselves for work? I think it's um, probably just to speak to people that they know that work, their parents perhaps, their grandparents, aunts and uncles, neighbours. Um, if they know somebody that works in a particular environment, like care, what's it like? Um, to uh, to be committed to the company that they're going to be working for, so to learn a little bit about the company. Don't just turn up and think, I'm going to work here. Know something about the company. Know something about the ethos of the company. Um, and make sure that you're dedicated to your company. So, you know, show that you're going to turn up at 8 o'clock each day and go home. You know, don't take days off sick when you're not really sick, those sorts of things.